Okay, hello everyone and welcome to our uh, visualization in CPQ webinar. We're gonna record the session, so um, if, if, you, if you need to, you, you can watch it again afterwards. Uh, let me go ahead and, and get started here. The, what I would first like to do is a quick introduction. Um, my name is Frank Sohn and uh, I've worked for a little bit over 20 years now in this area that is now called Configure Price Quote and have worked with multiple different tools from the IT side as well as from the business side. Worked for large corporations like IBM, HP, um, Juniper Networks and PwC before I founded my own company and as part of uh, this, this new company, Novo CPQ, uh, I was working with a, with a former colleague of mine, Anjali, on uh, doing some research for visualization, and that's what this webinar is based upon. Um, Anjali is not with us today, but if you have any questions afterwards, you can send them to us, and uh, we, we will answer the question. So the, let's, let's do first some administrative info before we get started as everyone is in listen only mode. You can send questions uh, afterwards to info at noblecpq.com. We will answer them very quickly. Um, the webinar, as I said, as recorded, will be available online in the next couple of days. And if you have not received this free CPQ research report, which almost everyone should have, then there is a section in this go to webinar control panel which says handouts and the free report is over there. You can download it from there as well. If that shouldn't work for whatever reason, then uh, please go ahead and send, send an email to info at NovoCPQ and you will get this free report. Also, the, the winners for the full version have been notified yesterday. They have received the report if anyone had um, challenges with that, which they shouldn't, but if you had that, please uh, uh, let us know and uh, we, we fix that right away. Let's go ahead and let's start and see what, what is the objective for these next 30 minutes is really to learn some basics about visualization and using configure price code when we talk about visualization. So we have these two flavors, visualization and virtualization. Visualization is what we refer to in this report in this webinar is 2D and 3D. And then virtualization is virtual reality, augmented reality. We go into all of these in a little bit more detail here in a, in a sec. And then uh, we also want you to, to learn a little bit more about these and see if and, and how your business can potentially benefit from this. And even though I see we do not have um, uh, all the attendees on the on the phone just yet. Uh, let, let's do a quick poll just to see how much you know about visualization at this point. And uh, it only has three very basic answers. So if we take five five seconds to see that, that that probably helps to understand who is on the call. So I opened the the poll right now. If you want to submit the answers now, then uh, let's wait a sec. Okay, and let me close the poll again at this point. Okay, the, the results, as you can see, uh, I had it very basic. I'm a pro, so you, you know what this is about, right? As, as 44%, I'm somewhat familiar as 44 and have no idea as 11%. So I hope we have something for, for everyone in this webinar. So let's go and first uh, start. Um, with what is visualization. So in this case, I think on a very basic level, it is a graphical display of a product. Uh, and you do that display on a desktop, laptop, any kind of headset that, that you have or uh, on mobile devices, iPads, tablets. So every time you, you do this display, you, <clears throat> you may use uh, 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 one of the visualization or virtualization technologies that we mentioned, and then you can see this may not apply to every product, but for certain products, it makes uh, a lot of sense to visualize these products. We will look at some examples here in a sec. What I would also like to do is, before we go there, is show you this uh, possible alternatives. And that the reason I do that is because we saw 
uh, as we did uh, our CPQ research report and when we talked to the different vendors and, and their customers, that uh, some customers and vendors are not ready to jump in there uh, full time just yet. And then customers are asking for alternatives, something that has some of the benefits but is not the full visualization solution. And that is one example that you can see on this slide on the lower uh, uh, left hand side. I grabbed um, a screenshot from the HP uh, online shopping website where you can see an image of a laptop. And then you have these, what I would call features and feature values of so feature is like the operating system and you have different choices for that feature. These are the feature values. In this picture, you see the Windows 10 Home 64 highlighted. So that's a feature value. As you go through this configuration and you make changes, the image will not change. So you have a high level idea how the product looks like. It is potentially better than not having any image at all, but this is not the visualization we're talking about. It may be sufficient for some customers for some time. Uh, what we heard during this research and, and before as well as this is mostly due to cost restraints and, and uh, shows more temporary solution than a, a permanent one. But this is not what we're talking about, but it is a potentially a viable alternative to the visualizations we're talking about if uh, cost is, is very critical. Now let's look at some visualization examples. And what I need to state here is also we had 10 different CPQ vendors who participated in our research. We could have and should have probably taken examples from each and every one of them. Uh, that doesn't work because we would have needed two and a half slides just to show an example from everyone. So we just want to show some representative examples for visualization here. And what you see is that we uh, picked only four and it's, it's more to represent the products than um, to, to show any uh, to to refer uh, to any specific vendor. So just just to clarify that. Let's start uh, and we will start and go through this clockwise. We start with the car. And by the way, all the examples that you see over here are 3D examples that are used either on an app or on, on the internet. So cars, you probably have all seen this. There is visualization is very helpful. When you go online, you look for this, you may see it. Um, and, and one thing uh, that, that sh shows that as you see the car from the outside, you see it from the, from the inside, depending on what you're configuring. So for example, if you work on the exhaust pipe, you will uh, see the car from the back. If you look uh, and want to change the steering wheel, you, pro you, you look at the inside of the car and if you're looking at wheels, then you see the car from the outside. So there is a certain logic to this and it allows you some, uh, zooming in and out potentially and it also allows you to rotate potentially the the view so that you can see this car from different angles. Uh, th this may or may not be available but this is one example where visualization makes a lot of sense, where it helps, where it improves and we look at the benefits here in a sec. Another example where this use is when you look to the right of that and is this medical device it has it is attached to the ceiling it has three different arms on each and every arm you have different equipment attached in this case it's a screen and you have um, a lamp and there could be other things that's something that would be used for a surgery room for a dentist office in this case it can also you can place a person in there to see do they have enough room to maneuver the way they need to so that they have enough uh, freedom of movement it's, it's a very different case from the automotive industry. So this is more for the medical uh, tech uh, industry, a use case. Then below that you see sofas. So, and, and, and you see multiple uh, furniture pieces here. So multiple sofas and, and this little table, they have different colors. They could have different textures. And that is something that is very popular, especially in, in the furniture industry. Um, you want to see before you buy something, how does it look like in, in my environment? How does it look like in general? And so on. So that's another uh, very good example of uh, visualization. Then on the left beside that is some clothing example. 
which also gives you a visual and a textual uh, way to select these different features as if you want to have additional pockets how does it look like where do you where can you place these pockets and so on so this is just before we go in there when we say visualization what does it mean it is all focused on one um, uh, uh, one example here with more with 3d and it as I said there are more examples on where this is used you if you already looked at the free report you probably see that the um, that there was that there are many more industries where uh, visualization can potentially be beneficial now since we looked at some of these examples let's have a look at some of the technologies and and what that means and we start with uh, the the basics and um, as the the 2d Drawings are uh, probably what's most popular right now. Most of the customers have most of their users for 2D, even though some of the CPQ vendors mentioned that they consider this technology to become obsolete in the coming years. This is not the case right now. It is the, the one which has the most users and is uh, the most used. So when you look at this, you see an example uh, image. What, what is the 2D uh, generated image? What you can also think of is um, like you have a, a bathroom or and, and yeah, in the bathroom you have different, so you have a shower cabin, you have a bathtub, you have a sink. And for example, for the shower um, cabin, how does the door open? Where can you place it? So for these kinds of drawings uh, to, together with the measurements, you would typically have 2D. And so they can be used more for simpler products. Um, with special requirements or as I just said if, if you if you have like four drawings and in, in, uh, with the bathtub with the kitchen if you just want to see measurements the room layout then this is used as well and most of the time 2d drawings are also attached to a quote so you may have configured something in a different technology but when you attach it to a quote you attach it to 2d and that is very common so this is one thing, also one additional note, you saw that uh, in, in, in the overview of the vendors who offer these solutions, some vendors only offer 2D, some authors uh, work with, with other vendors to go and, and uh, offer any other uh, technologies in addition to 2D, but they may not do it themselves. So that's uh, interesting to, to see when you look at the different vendors who provide these solutions. Then, um, uh, oh, okay, one thing I should mention over here also, so there are uh, basic static images, so that means you're taking a picture of your product. Let's take the sofa, for example. So if I take a, a picture of a white sofa, a blue sofa, a red sofa, I can take all these uh, images. And I, if, but as you can see, as you have more products and more possible combinations, you potentially have lots of different images. So as these uh, combinations grow, the, the, the need for these images grows and this, these images are referred to by CPQ vendors mostly as visual assets and that can be a lot of data. In addition to that, you have um, these are the static images I was just talking about. In addition to that, there are also dynamic images or layered images. What that would mean is if I take the sofa example, again, I have one sofa. I can add different colors to it. I can add different textures to it, but I only have one image of the sofa. To do this layering, you can use a a tools like Adobe Scene 7 or Liquid Pixels. So that's used as well. The important thing over here is to keep in mind how many images or pictures you would need uh, for your products, right? So that will tell you if that, is, if that would potentially make sense or how much effort you, you would potentially have to build up these visual assets. Now let's go to Visual 3D. So the uh, 3D is three-dimensional. You probably know it is uh, used mostly for engineering and design. Uh, your engineering department may use it. These are tools like uh, Autodesk, uh, uh, Inventor, SolidWorks, PTC Creo, and a whole bunch of others. What they usually have is a lot of extra data. So because 
uh, you need to know that you can build this or you have weight, you have the center of gravity and you have other things that, that you would need in these uh, CAT tools, which you do not need in the CPQ tools. So um, what, you, what you can do is you can import uh, these product models from your CAT tools into CPQ, this is one way, or in uh, most of the CPQ tools, you can go ahead and just set up the 3D models directly in, in uh, the CPQ tool. Now, important is that 75% of all the users who use visualization have CAT tools and import it from there. So that's something to keep in mind. And it's also one of the challenges here is that the CAT file usually is big because, as I said earlier, it has a lot of information with this uh, weight and center of gravity and so on. And uh, therefore, the file size is fairly big. If you need to render this image on different devices, you want to reduce the file size so that it's that you get higher quality images when you when you render this. And also, uh, the visualization here has uh, two different flavors. The one is it's a static um, visualization, which means all the possible combinations have been pre-done. So you thought about it before, you've done it before, and others are, it is built up dynamic, so you build it on the fly. What it does in general is, again, as you can uh, see also on this image here, it's, it's a product, you can uh, zoom in and zoom out, you can rotate it so that you see the different views. Uh, you can also take two images, uh, 2D images of this 3D, uh, image and then attach it to the to the quote potentially. So that is the the 3D in 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 two minutes and then let's go and change gears a little bit and go to the different technologies. So this now is the let's say the the newer ones uh, which you probably read about a lot also right now in all the newspapers you see it with the the visualization and and have the virtual headsets and stuff like this. So and on if you think about it on a continuum, and I show that to you in a sec here, is you have virtual reality, which is completely artificial. So there is nothing real in this. You make up an environment and you present it to the end user. Where that is used is, for example, you have an, um, yeah, you, you, yeah, at an auto show and you don't want to move your cars around. So in this case, I can render these images in all details to you via a a headset, right? So this was one example. There are many more. Uh, you could, um, yeah, there are too many examples to mention over here, but it's uh, complete, completely computer generated and you usually have a headset on, as you can see on this image over here. Um, what you see over here is mostly based on gaming. So you have the headset, you have the hand controllers. You could also have an audio headset, which for CPQ purposes, you, you usually don't need. So you, you have the headset probably and some hand controllers, which allows you to change some of the option. Um, and this is to, to control certain elements in, in this environment. One precondition here is that you use, um, uh, that you have a 3D model in CPQ. And, and think about the different uh, difference I mentioned earlier. You can have 3D in your CAT tool. It is not the same as 3D in your CPQ tool. So in this case, before you want to use virtual reality, you have to set up this 3D model in CPQ. Uh, <coughs> and this is uh, th there's a precondition. This this needs to happen. One last note over here is uh, for, for some of these newer technologies, it makes sense to have a, a good look at the different firms that you're interested in to see how much uh, they, uh, they actually use it, how many real customers they have, and if there are more showcases than, than customers. So, but it's, it's technology that is supported by numerous ones, the same as with augmented reality. Augmented reality is a different flavor of this. Now, as, let's first have a look at this image over here. It mixes the real environment, which is represented by the catalog laying on this table, and there is nothing else, right? But when you look through this iPad, you see there are some shoes on top of the catalog. So what this says is basically you're mixing the real environment with the, uh, the virtual environment, and therefore um, give the user a different experience. And 
uh, you can use these devices as in this example over here, a tablet, a laptop, you can have smartphones, um, but all of these uh, require you to hold it in your hands basically. And if it's very important for you to have hands-free operation, then it makes more sense to use devices like Microsoft's HoloLens. <coughs> for the HoloLens, uh, common comment we heard from multiple uh, customers as well as vendors is a drawback right now is mostly the price. The price is around three thousand in the in the U.S. three thousand dollars, and I think it was a little bit over three thousand euro in in Europe. But a key advantage is the hands-free operation, and this in one precondition here is the same as what I mentioned earlier for the virtual reality. You have to have a 3D model in CPQ in order to use this. Um, augmented reality is um, is uh, very popular with certain industries. In this case, I, I want to mention the the furniture industry. Uh, it, it goes so far that some of the uh, parties we talk to assume that this will become a new standard in the coming years, that this is the, the, the way to go forward and that's almost not optional to do that, that it becomes mandatory to do it. Uh, but there are many more use cases. I just wanted to pick out this one since it um, was mentioned by numerous parties we talked to that this is a, a very key development for them. Now, there you could talk more about the mixed reality um, and, and that's a term I heard mostly from uh, our European partners and that is it, it shows basically on a continuum. If you look at the drawing at the bottom, there's the real environment on the left and the virtual environment on the right. So these are both extremes. Everything in between is mixing the two somehow, right? So and if you just want to have a quick overview of all these different possible combinations of real and, and virtual, then you can use the link that you can see over here. It gives you, I think, a, a good quick overview, nothing too deep. Now, if you go, want to go really deep into this, there is from one of the product configuration gurus who wrote uh, the mass customization book in the, in 92 is Joseph Pine. He wrote a book where he looked at different realities, virtualities for people who are interested to found their own companies determine what options are out there, who can benefit from what. Um, it goes really deep, is really intense. So if you want to look for this more intense overview, then this book from, from Joseph Pine is, and, and Kim Korn is definitely the way to go. For everyone else, that will be too much. I would suggest just have a quick uh, look at this mixed reality so that you understand what it is. At this point, what I would like to do is also do another um, a poll here just to see what you are mostly um, interested in uh, concerning visualization techniques. So I, I launched this quickly here and um, see what what you think. And we continue here in five five seconds. Okay. Okay, let me close it. One last change, okay, good. Then uh, let me share the results, what we see over here. So it's a, a small number of folks is interested in 2D. The large majority definitely is interested in 3D. And then we have uh, also some interest in virtual reality and augmented reality. Okay, excellent. So then uh, let, let's, uh, do this quickly over here, some basics. When you use uh, visual and virtual solutions, one thing that doesn't change is you have configuration rules like for, the, for any tool that you use. If you buy product A, then you also need to have product B. These kinds of product uh, configuration rules, and I obviously made it very super simple, right? So there are different complexity levels, but these kinds of rules you need for every tool, nothing changes here just because you visualize it. Uh, the one of the, the deciding steps is step two is when you need to set up this visual data what I showed you earlier you have cat models in your uh, tool and you need to import this into your CPQ tool right to create a visual asset for this so you're stripping off this heavy information from the cat tool and make it a little bit lighter weight for your CPQ tool you have images that you took uh, like an image database right 
when you create these visual assets, that is something that takes considerable time. And it was can be very time and resource intense, which obviously also translates into potentially additional cost. And most mentioned that this is definitely the highest investment that they see. So this is uh, th this is something you really have to think about your products. How many uh, images do you need? How uh, time intense will it be to build up these visual images? Uh, once you have done that and you go to th uh, step three, then it's important how can you marry these two? So you have the rules from your configurator and now you have the images. How can you connect these two? So that's the third step. So. One example, going back to something I mentioned on an earlier slide, is that you have uh, the steering wheel in the car, and when you configure the steering wheel and you want to change it from black leather to white leather, for example, then you need to view inside the car. You need to look at the, at the steering wheel, right? So these kinds of rules have to be set up as well. It's not as time intense as the, the other step, but this is how you really connect the two configuration rules and the visual assets to uh, to make it impactful for the user. Now, some of the benefits that you have for the visualization is obvious. Um, I think every time you configure something that you can see where you benefit from seeing it, um, then a visual or a virtual configurator uh, makes potentially sense. Um, because when you see the product, you ensure it is correct. And in this case, it is uh, often true that a picture is worth a thousand words. That's why when you're seeing it, seeing is understanding. So, and it also increases the customer satisfaction because you can look at this, you know at it right away what you get. You're uh, in, in a lot of industries, customers are still very uh, excited when they do that. It's not common, not everyone does it. So it increases the customer satisfaction. It also helps you with the communication. Um, one example I could think of again, relating back to a, an example we saw earlier as with the dentist office, you can see if um, you have enough room to maneuver and you can communicate, oh, this is not the, the, the equipment I was expecting on this arm, for example, right? It is a different one. So th this helps. Then you have the standard uh, benefits that you have with every CPQ tool. No, doesn't is not specific to visualization. It's you sell the product faster, you sell more product, and you have less configuration errors. It is all enhanced, obviously, by using uh, visualization. And then last but not least is, is important because a number of customers mentioned this is uh, the wow experience because users don't expect that you you do that right so depending on what industry you're in uh, depending on uh, uh, the size of your business also they do not expect this so uh, and and it was more users than we initially expected that referred back to this wow experience impress their customers have something their competition doesn't have was reasonful for numerous uh, customers also to go for the visualization so when we Look at this right now all together as um, I think one thing which needs to be clarified first is visualization is not for everyone. Right now, it's still a niche. The niche is getting bigger, but it is still a niche. So uh, not everyone needs it, but when you need it, you saw 2D, 3D is well established. There are numerous vendors out there who do that uh, versus the, the these newer technologies, work, virtual reality, augmented reality. They are still more in earlier stages. And again, there are differences, slight differences potentially between uh, different geographies and different industries. But in general, uh, I think that that is true. Then uh, one thing which also became very obvious that visualizations will be more used in the future. So there were various, various reasons mentioned for this as like millennials uh, go more to the websites. They demand these uh, pictures because that's what they see when they use the apps that they usually do. So uh, there was general agreement that the visualization will be used more. Um, but at this point, what's holding it back is there is this visualization knowledge gap. That's also the reason why we got the, the report, have this webinar today to just help uh, spread this knowledge a little bit, make it more accessible. But this should be an opportunity for service providers to uh, to to offer more knowledge here to make it more accessible for uh, for more customers or prospects. 
someone who's interested. Uh, at this point in time, it is still important to note that visualization requires potentially a large effort and time and money. So uh, uh, this is something you have to, to think about ahead of time. It doesn't come for free. It uh, has, uh, according to all the feedback that we received, uh, 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 a good return on investment. But what, was imp uh, what is important to note here is that uh, from all the customers we talked to, and that means really small customers to large uh, global organizations with tens of thousands of or hundreds of thousands of employees, um, they do not have hard numbers to really say this is what we got back because of that. But they were all very insistent and clear that the investment into visualization makes sense and was successful. Um, and to close on this over here, uh, in, in general, I think the conclusion is similar to what you see also for the gaming industry. The adoption of virtual CPQ will become more mainstream as the hardware becomes easier available, uh, it becomes easier to handle, and is more standardized. So this is um, a, a quick conclusion. What I wanted to mention over here is there is the report over here. You see the different vendors who participated. You see the methodology. Don't want to go in there right now, but you, you see that over here. What I want to close with is um, there will be a short questionnaire that you will receive after this call. If you could fill that out, that will help us to make these webinars better, uh, uh, have the right content in there, and um, provide the information that's useful to you. So if you can take it, it should be less than a minute. There's four questions. And so if you could do that quickly, that would be great. If you have any questions, please go ahead, send us, um, send them to info at novuscpq.com. We will answer as quickly as possible. Uh, I want to thank everyone for participating in today's call. Thank you very much. Bye.